Welcome to Translating Infinity. They are communicating. Have we forgotten how to listen? Hello and welcome to Episode 1 of Translating Infinity. I'm glad you're here. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Eileen Meyer, E.M. Meyer, or just call me M for short. I am a translator. I didn't exactly know that until my consciousness was changed enough to translate that I am a translator. I know that may sound strange, but this is pretty much the gist of this unusual life. It was a life I detested until I was changed enough to see now that this life is the greatest blessing I could ever imagine. In this first episode, I'd like to provide a general overview of my recent inspiration to share data with you in podcast format. I may also link to episode-related data on YouTube and other sites. I've always had a blog since the great blogosphere was announced in the early part of the century, but over the last year, I've gotten the nudge to depart from the written word as my primary mode of sharing. However, with that said, I shared a ton of translated data from the field on a variety of blogs, and it's timeless guidance for how things would be changing, and how humanity was entering a very special window, or intersection in time-space, whereby we would have a great deal of opportunity and support to remember who we are. We are in this intersection now. I considered writing another book, but books and the language we use to write them, for me, it's never been a big enough container for the poetic, timeless, thick nature of what arrives in my changed brain, my awakened brain, that which I translate and share with you. Oh, and just so we're clear, this shift occurred over decades an arc of evolution through ET, non-human intelligence contact, also Kundalini, and much more. Believe me, we'll get into all that, but there's something you need to know now. I was asked to share with you what they shared with me. But remember, they don't use words. Over the years, I've used words to translate with my limited vocabulary. But this is no longer enough. They are helping to change us by initially triggering us, revealing to us by awakening that which has been suppressed. There are stages of this, and it feels foreign and odd and crazy at first, but eventually this leads to witnessing and demonstrating our power and gifts so that it becomes real to us again. It's a bit of a catch-22 situation. More than likely, what I share will frustrate many of you because you've only been trained to use your linear thinking mind for the most part. We've essentially been imprisoned inside this tiny bandwidth or incomplete equation for what we have named life. You're used to receiving all of your orientation to life in this limited way. And by limited... I am simply saying that for centuries we were unaware of these technologies until some of us dreamed or experienced directly other ways of being. And it is these others that visit, I have learned, that have been ambassadors of sorts, aspects of our own consciousness that come to wake us up, to remind us of this extraordinary opportunity to restore our natural state. I am completely unattached to how you receive any of this. If I have three listeners or three million, these are not important identifiers to me as to the value of what I share. If this isn't for you, I promise you I will not take it personally, and I encourage you to find what does resonate with you. In these times, it's more important that you be engaged with moving forward now with what you love and in the creative ways that excite you, rather than digging your heels in and arguing with perceived enemies out there. While I will set myself up with a donation button to help me cover costs, 
I am not interested in generating a brand, a slick website, and a fat revenue stream with this project. This is part of the demonstration for a new paradigm. I am sustained by grace, not the system we are leaving behind. I am entrained to light, to love. I am tethered to the divine, none of which fits into organized religion, by the way. But hey, I still find myself searching for the words that most closely resonate with their vibrational origins. No words suffice for this level of love that every one of us can access within our own being. It's about music, frequency, and attunement to our original source. So you are invited into my world now. I lived or rather survived in that old world the best I could, sitting next to you on planes and trains, shopping near you in the grocery store, playing on the beach, even sitting in the next cubicle over. While I watched most of you adapt to that world far better than I, I seemed to have a different trajectory. I had visitors. I didn't know back then that there was a plan. I felt like two different people. It was touch and go on several occasions, but when I decided I needed to be fully authentic, no more hiding what I knew to be true, things changed big time. Listen, I know you did your best in that world too, but it's done. Even if we can still see remnants of the old world in our peripheral vision and what that looks like as people defend their positions and identities that they are attached to in their old way of being, It need not pull us back in. We are building a different trajectory. I'd like to view this podcast as one experiencer inviting you into her library, pouring you a cup of coffee or tea and sharing what she has learned. And then I'd like to hear from you if you are so inspired. Are you being changed too? How are you changing? Are you feeling the joy yet? What is the resonant data that comes through you? This is what I would have loved back in the day when I had no other human to talk to about these things. So whether you consider yourself an experiencer or not, it makes no difference to me. I've told many people that I think we're all experiencers. It's just that I notice for some people the conditioning is heavier. Their experiences are more like fleeting lucidity, um, glimpses of infinity here and there. And then unconsciously, many are pulled back into old patterns, addictions, and routines. It's why I'm studying addiction now, because I believe that most of humanity is addicted or enabling others to stay in the addiction to the substances and behaviors that keep us small. The fear of the unknown has kept us here. Yet for those of us left utterly transformed by these otherworldly events, refusing to go back to the smaller way of being and wanting to understand what is happening to us, well, we need to be talking with each other now. And for everyone else, if you are drawn to this, there is good reason for it. And if you just want to listen in, my heart is overjoyed that you would visit my library too. So on the launch of my first episode, I can't say that I have a crystal clear outline for any of what follows. I have the visions in my third eye. I have knowing in my heart. But these days, I'm pretty comfortable allowing the non-linear serendipity of it all. It's the way it works in this new world. I've had enough evidence over my lifetime that this is our natural state anyway. I won't have a schedule for when these episodes drop. They will appear when they appear. So please subscribe on your favorite podcast app to receive these notifications. I made numerous attempts in that old world to be seen and heard in a variety of ways. I was so full of joy and excitement. You just had to know these things. After all those years of confusion and then breakthroughs and understanding, noticing that I am becoming more, I'm seeing more, I'm hearing more, I'm meeting more of myself, I wanted nothing more than to shout it from the rooftops 
what I had come to know about our original design. But I was either invisible or heavily judged in response to my pain and crying out around these things. There were clear moments of humor that came through the frequency messages, a sort of nod from them. Now you know how we feel. We, meaning the others, the intelligence that is reaching into this construct here. Humanity has been unreachable for eons because we forgot something intrinsic within our design. No matter our gender, our feminine nature and inner technologies have been suppressed. These downloads and messages helped me to understand that we are more, so much more than what we've been told. And without our natural state in harmony with the earth and the cosmos, with each other, with all that is, they showed me that the fragmented ones may forever loop in this limited spectrum of reality. No one can save us. We have to want to remember who we are. I woke up with a dream on Christmas morning 2021. I won't go into that now. But it feels like there is a more potent space for many more of us to come forward, to be seen and heard. Perhaps this coming out time will help a few more to understand who we are, human beings, and what is possible for us. The hundredth monkey phenomenon comes to mind, where a new behavior or an entirely new way of being is occurring right now for individuals. We won't see or hear about this on the news. We just feel it. We know it. And at a certain tipping point, it just suddenly manifests in the collective. The proverbial leap forward. So as I embark on this project, I am happy that you are joining me. Together, we will manifest a growing resonance of our truth, spoken with passion, grace, and without apology. To cover the early years of my life, I'd like to read a few excerpts from my book, Koyopa Contact Within, The Plumed Serpent Rises. I see it as providing a good foundation and context for all that was to come and all that continues today. From Chapter 1, Bridging from Mechanics to Resonance. They were just as normal to me as my bucket, my shovel, and my sand-filled shorts. We would converse for hours in the sandbox on the north side of the house about things I couldn't have known or spoken of as a child. Sometimes I recall talking out loud, but mostly I just knew what they were sharing or communing with me via the feelings, tones, and moving pictures that played in my mind's eye. Everything was fine and dandy until I told my mom how much I loved the tall blue and gold people. They were bright, and they looked a little like the pictures of angels I'd seen depicted in books and on TV. Soft, wispy shapes of light. They did not have wings, yet to me they were my angel family, who visited me in the sandbox in my bedroom at night, and down by the creek where I merged with the trees the birds, and the pollywogs. I was still an innocent who had not yet disconnected from her natural state. In this vivid reality, I had many delightful friends, including three beautiful horses that followed me everywhere, to the grocery store, when I walked to school, and even on our family vacations. I remember feeling safe and comforted by their presence, imaginary or not. My mother wasn't comforted by any of it. It took a long time to adjust to living in the world. Actually, I'm not sure I've ever fully achieved that. The little blonde tomboy in her wild imagination was tolerated for a while, but soon I was being asked by my parents and schoolmates to stop with the crazy stories. So I did. But only after my loving otherworldly friends did their best to explain. I was informed through their distinct spheres of harmonic messages that my imagination and my ability to perceive them would be leaving me for a while. 
I remember crying for many nights until I simply grew tired of being sad. Yet I remained in full trust that one day I would reconnect with them, my real family, again. Alas, it seems that as my body grew bigger, the sound and creative expression of my spirit grew much, much smaller. Inaudible and invisible, you might say. Conditioning does that. Thankfully, in my early teen years, this intelligence returned. However, it was a bittersweet reunion. During the visits, I felt a polarizing joy and enormous pain all at once. In the cosmic direction, I was in the full embrace of pure vibratory love, and it felt like it was the source of all reaching out to know me. However, in the worldly direction, that is my everyday life with everyday responsibilities, I was now hyper aware of the growing contrast this generated within my conditioned psyche. It turns out it's quite difficult to keep up with 3D protocols following the direct and felt experience of a near unbearable level of cosmic love in the body. It had to remain a secret, though, because that was crazy talk in the world out there. It also presented a fascinating conundrum to me. The spiritual community not only seemed to have no interest, no matter the religion or belief system, but the subject also clearly made them uncomfortable and sometimes even angry to hear of it. It seems there was no one in my life at the time or for decades to come who could relate to me or simply support me in reconciling everyday life to these epic doses of love. And now I'm going to skip ahead to an excerpt in chapter two, What Do I Know? Feeling My Way Through Life. As an innocent child, I applied resonance as a natural way to connect with my angel friends and to always know what I needed to know. It was easy. Like most, in the first few years of my life, my family and community granted me permission to be a child, essentially freeing me to engage with my fantastical imagination. As I grew older, I was told by virtually everyone that it was the wrong way and that it wouldn't work in the world. Later, I would develop learning disabilities, a speech impediment, and experience indescribable fears of being seen or spoken to. I was confused and off balance most of the time, but I did my best to figure out the bizarre rules of the game here. In school and related social activities, all I wanted was to be invisible and blend into the plain beige background of life. One thing that I am sure of is that I don't really know anything here in the world. Finally, in my fifth decade of life, I understand the wisdom of this detached way of being now. It seemed that my entire life followed a certain natural modus operandi that was founded in don't get too attached to anything here, stay neutral, and tune into the truth that permeates all. I know that this may sound nebulous, but it was an inner guideline that always made perfect sense to me. Thankfully, I'm still here. What I mean by that is I'm not dead or institutionalized like I know others, other peak experiencers like me, might be. My anchor was to always stay with the frequency throughout these transformational episodes. Don't think, trust the feeling of love. This was the constant, the one message that was communicated every time by the intelligence as it swirled with light, sound, passion, and conviction throughout my body. I would have gone mad without that all-important message, as it seemed there was no stopping this preordained evolutionary program. While I didn't get the advance memo for this universal course, the frequency spoke to me every time. I was remembering how to hear and comprehend this language that danced and sang to me from within. Apparently, word got out that I was open. The peak experiences throughout my life involved angels, ETs, archetypes, animal spirits, fairies, and more. Still, I found that meeting all these colorful characters along the way was not a destination, but rather part of a journey 
one that prepared me to meet the ultimate, the greater self that knew its source. Still, this clarity or whole view became more fleeting and sporadic over the years. Mostly, it would make for a very challenging life of repeating cycles of expansion and contraction. I would remember and forget. Remember and forget. These other forms of intelligence showed up to help through the songs or language of the heart. It was glorious and life-enhancing. Still, the more they showed up, the more different or abnormal I became. Growing up, and even into my adult years, I was always so amazed and even envious of others who were masters of the left brain. They seemed to have it all. The world was their oyster, as they say. I watched them easily fit into the program of learning, retaining, synthesizing, regurgitating, and perpetuating words that wrapped ideas and concepts into perfect little end products. We were all taught how to generate consumables or services that were highly valued within the program and in turn perpetuated our given existence. We learned how to do this from our teachers and other grown-ups who lived within the bandwidth too, the container of all that was normal and admissible. I was especially in awe of those who could carve out a sense of happiness and fulfillment within the bandwidth. Believe me, they were far more popular at parties than I. Alas, the world and all of its valued knowledge and relative data have remained tiring and even foreign to me throughout my life. Conversely, I was not only boring to those who were oriented to the left brain stuff of the world, I noticed that I was barely visible, living in the misty fringes of normal, like a feminine ghost in the machine. And that was okay. Preferable, actually. And skipping ahead a bit in the same chapter. There were more visitations, tonal happenings, and downloaded teachings from the presence throughout high school. They continued to feed a growing cognitive dissonance and anxiety within me. It made me feel even more socially awkward and withdrawn from the normal behavior and activities of my teenage peers. Some of my clearest contact memories during this time had to do with waking up in the night and realizing that I was floating about four feet above my bed. The light form stood at the foot and side of me as my bed was pushed up against a corner of my room. Sometimes they would fill the whole room, max capacity, as if this were the interdimensional hotspot to be. One notable perception on my part was that another me stood with them, and I was perfectly aware and on board with the purpose of these visits. When I, the human girl, would wake up into the realization that I was hovering above my bed, surrounded by a room full of non-human light forms, it was as if my local awareness was the last one to arrive to a party that had been going on for hours. At this point, the downloading into my heart-brain-body would initiate what I needed to know, for the present time, as well as into my future. As desperately as I had wanted to share what was happening to me, and more importantly, what I was learning or remembering, I discovered that it was quite hazardous for me to enter the explain-drain mode in my numerous attempts to describe these orientations with parents and friends. It disempowered me and zapped my life force energy, leaving me susceptible to low self-esteem, illness, and depression. In other words, when I adapted too far into the smaller mental spectrum in order to appear and communicate normally, I would compromise my own health and energetic balance. Additionally, I recall developing a ridiculous over-the-top terror with speech. Communicating in empty words and memorized concepts was foreign and extremely difficult for me. I don't recall feeling truly at home with speech until I discovered and began practicing my own authentic voice. However, this didn't occur until far into the future. What I understand more today is that if you and I were able to sound or resonate together in this vibrational place, 
neither one of us would need language or detailed explanations. Little did I know that this would be the entire theme of my life, having an actual felt experience and then obsessively trying to find a resonant match for it in the world, be they analogies, metaphors, or simply words in a book that I could point to. I was desperate to find the right language to share with others. Ultimately, my life quest was born. I felt that people needed to know that this huge love is what all of human consciousness is connected to, a lost or missing piece that is longed for unconsciously that, when suppressed or denied, can perpetuate endless conflict, addictions, and countless misunderstandings. Ah, but no one, and I mean no one, was interested in what I was passionately and privately engaged in. This lack of mirroring or validation in the upside-down world made me crazy. Soon I felt ashamed of being this strange young girl that people were either afraid of or made fun of or both. I literally had no one to inform me that I had value. And there was no outer appreciation for me for just being me. I clearly see how this leads to an escalation of inauthentic masking or ways of being in order to survive and feel loved in the world. I wrote that book in 2016 and published it in 2017. It feels like a lifetime ago. While it has been a difficult life for myself and certainly others like me, I have no complaints. We were derailed from that old world, and yet we are still here. We've had to face our greatest fears, our deepest fears, around how to live and thrive on the earth again, with the earth, with integrity. So many paradoxes, the conundrums that challenged us every step of the way, and still do, but it's not as heavy a load as it once was. It was all to bring us to this now moment, And for all those who are still listening at this point in the episode, thank you. I know you wouldn't be hearing these words unless you found resonance, a familiarity in my voice and words. So I congratulate you for your courage, your gifts, and your willingness to fully be here as we all go off script and trust this divine inner resonance to guide us forward into the home frequency again. I'm not here to figure everything out from the foundation of a polarized world, to explain things in the words and the ways that the ego expects. I'm just here to share my piece of this grand puzzle through my own changes in consciousness and direct experience. It's all about preferences now. I know what I prefer in any given moment. I'm clear. But that doesn't give me the right to judge others when they exercise their preferences in other directions that I have no interest in. My greatest hope is that many more will come forward in these times to share what they discovered on their own unique journeys beyond the construct. These are our lives. We don't have to fit into popular narratives or even alternative narratives. We lift each other up and give one another permission to translate infinity, source, in the ways that give us joy. And from here, we build resonance and community in love. And now, to close out this episode, I'd like to share a piece with you that I created back in 2014. It's also a video on my YouTube channel, and I'll make sure to add a link to it in the podcast notes. In each episode, I'll share an inspired poem, song, or transmission from my vast collection of binders and hard drives. For 18 years, I've recorded my dialoguing sessions the way that I was taught. It has produced some surprising things along the way. Messages that for years I didn't understand, so I filed them away. Now that we are in a larger context, these messages are unlocking, like stowaways on this interdimensional ship between paradigms. With this particular piece I called Entering the I Am Field, I wanted to demonstrate the transition from my local consciousness to the field, or non-local consciousness. 
As a singer-songwriter, it's all music to me, so on a few occasions I place them within soundscapes for an added creative flair. Being a creative in this life has kept me alive and sane, even though they all told me that I was the insane one. I believed them for a while. Never again. It's time to rise. is where all of you meet your maker. This field comes to you through frequency. We are present now as consciousness, one with the I am field to assist you in diving in, diving, diving in, to reclaim the truth of your identity. Once this is reclaimed, healing and recovery takes place. This is not a mental process, understand this. This is all-consuming feeling, actually vibrating in this love, in a level of love that you have only been able to imagine, to project, how it must be or must feel based on what you have known from the past. 
it is understood that this is how you operate within fragmented consciousness and there is opportunity now to shift and to change to accept this be this and operate from this some will feel that it is a new foundation of course it feels new and yet it is not new it is what has always been and always will be love 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 it is important that each and every individual forgive the self let go of self judgment in any way shape or form stand back and realize that you have been operating within a very very limited bandwidth of understanding with very little stretching room and flexibility and you have adapted to this and you have created from this and this is what you see in your everyday lives the screen that you view your creations upon. What is being offered is this liquid I am field flowing in to meet you, to assist you in recalling who you are so that you may see that the walls that you once perceived enclosed your consciousness these walls no longer exist no longer, no longer exist. exist collectively you continue to perpetuate and to create these outer world scenarios close to home and far away once this immersion full immersion into your universal identity occurs your outer world experience and reality will rapidly transform understand that even in many of your spiritual religious practices there is not the full understanding of how this works in actual terms there is a great deal of repetition in reciting truths wisdom that has been handed down while it has been helpful perhaps comforting in your lifetime and your familial ancestors times at this timing on earth and throughout the universe these wisdom recitations will not in actual terms be of assistance in your recalling and reintegrating into the field the I am field the oneness source why is this it is because when this occurs when this actual meeting occurs you are not able to access the past and to recite what you had learned in the past for you are in the now truly when this occurs 
and what is present in the now moment is your pure awareness, pure, pure awareness. Heart, heart, consciousness. Heart, heart, consciousness. Feeling all gradual at first, yet the introduction to feeling all. That you truly are as a light being in form. We will state honestly that this is challenging for most of you to meet yourself with a capital S. So source, a greater bandwidth, a vibration. It takes practice at this juncture to adapt to these frequencies. So many are attempting to make this leap from the foundation of the intellect, it will not occur in this way. Understand that clearly so many of you are practicing heart and compassion, love, practicing with the wisdom tools that you were given from the intellectual platform. It is not that it is not true. It is simply limited. You may practice this within what you have been living within, and it is good. Still, Source is here now wanting to meet you, to infuse you with the rest of yourselves so that you may practice from this foundation and completely transform your environment, your relationships, your experience of the world. We cannot tell you what this will look like for you precisely, for it is not something that happens to you. And this is the real challenge here, the shift from expecting, waiting for something to happen to you. And it literally happens through you. Many of you speak of present moment and now moment. And you have great intellectual understanding of this. And this is good. And yet, in actual terms, when present moment, I am field, meets with you. There is a reaction to distract the self, distract the consciousness, than to stay and to feel and embrace what is occurring in the heart. It is only frightening because it is an actual experience in your physicality, in your heart, in your pineal gland. The present moment meeting your source is here, waiting for your actual immersion your willingness to swim, to feel it, 
we speak at this timing in service to empower, to excite, to comfort, to hold you like the mother. You are always safe as you step into remembrance. It is always safe and you will have reactions initially that may frighten you. It is understood and returning again and again to this meeting strengthens you and changes you and changes your world. Make no mistake, this is how you change your world, truly. Everything else is a distraction. Do you hear this? Everything, everything is a distraction. This is where you recall your greater being, your greater self, and all of your capacities, your gifts, that you have perhaps only had an inkling of in the past. The clarity that comes from these meetings with Source here, now, will feed you and provide for you all that you need to express it into your outer world and outer relationships. This is your spiritual work. Simply showing up. And being willing to let go of stories and identities that no longer serve you that do not match the frequency that you truly are. The oneness wanted to know how this would work. To go from extraordinarily small and dense to remembering the truth of who you are and the all that you are connected. Be gentle with yourselves. Understand that it is extraordinarily simple. All of the pain and misunderstandings and confusion comes from the egoic level, creating drama and distraction to what is, to what simply is. Truly reflect on this, for it is the simple truth. Thank you for listening now and for feeling. Thank you for spending time with me. Pertinent links will be listed in the show notes below. My website, how to contact me and other bits and pieces that I have scattered across the internet. Remember, you are loved, you are love, and there's a really important purpose for you being here now. Welcome home. <laughs>